The Book of Judges, Chapter 1 It happened after the death of Joshua. The children of Israel asked of Yahweh, saying, Who should go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? Yahweh said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. Judah said to Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with you into your lot. So Simeon went with him. Judah went up, and Yahweh delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they struck them in Bezek, ten thousand men. They found Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they struck the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their food under my table, as I have done. So God has requited me. They brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. The children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. Afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who lived in the hill country, and in the south, and in the lowland. Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kiriath Arba. And they struck Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai. From there he went against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir before was Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, He who strikes Kiriath Sefer and takes it to him, I will give Aksa my daughter as wife. Othniel, the son of Canaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, as wife. It happened when she came to him that she moved him to ask of her father a field, and she alighted from off her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What would you like? She said to him, Give me a blessing, for that you have set me in the land of the south. Give me also springs of water. Then Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. The children of the Kenite, Moses' brother-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which is in the south of Arad, and they went and lived with the people. Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they struck the Canaanites who inhabited Zephath and utterly destroyed it. The name of the city was called Hormah. Also, Judah took Gaza with its border, and Ashkelon with its border, and Ekron with its border. Yahweh was with Judah and drove out the inhabitants of the hill country, for he could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. They gave Hebron to Caleb, as Moses had spoken, and he drove out there the three sons of Anak, the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. The house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and Yahweh was with them. The house of Joseph sent to spy out Bethel. Now the name of the city before was Luz. The watchers saw a man come forth out of the city, and they said to him, Please show us the entrance into the city, and we will deal kindly with you. He showed them the entrance into the city, and they struck the city with the edge of the sword, but they let the man go and all his family. The man went to the land of the Hittites and built a city and called its name Luz, which is its name to this day. Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shean and its towns, nor of Te'anach and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblim and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and its towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in that land. It happened when Israel had grown strong that they put the Canaanites to forced labor and did not utterly drive them out. Ephraim did not drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gezer, but the Canaanites lived in Gezer among them. Zebulun didn't drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalal, but the Canaanites lived among them and became subject to forced labor. Asher didn't drive out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of Sidon, 
nor of Alab, nor of Oxib, nor of Helba, nor of Afik, nor of Rehob, but the Asherites lived among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Naphtali didn't drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anoth, but he lived among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anoth became subject to forced labor. The Amorites forced the children of Dan into the hill country, for they would not allow them to come down into the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Heres, in Aijalon, and in Shealbim. Yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed, so that they became subject to forced labor. The border of the Amorites was from the ascent of Akrabim, from the rock and upward. Judges chapter 2 The angel of Yahweh came up from Gilgal to Bochim. He said, I made you go up out of Egypt and have brought you to the land which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break down their altars. But you have not listened to my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. But they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare to you. It happened when the angel of Yahweh spoke these words to all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. They called the name of that place Bochim, and they sacrificed there to Yahweh. Now when Joshua had sent the people away, the children of Israel went every man to his inheritance to possess the land. The people served Yahweh all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work of Yahweh that he had worked for Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Yahweh, died, being 110 years old. They buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath, Herez, in the hill country of Ephraim, on the north of the mountain of Gaash. Also, All that generation were gathered to their fathers, and there arose another generation after them who didn't know Yahweh, nor yet the work which he had worked for Israel. The children of Israel did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, and served the Baals. And they forsook Yahweh, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, of the gods of the peoples, who were around them, and bowed themselves down to them, and they provoked Yahweh to anger. They forsook Yahweh and served Baal and the Ashtaroth. The anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers who despoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of Yahweh was against them for evil, as Yahweh had spoken, and as Yahweh had sworn to them, and they were very distressed. Yahweh raised up judges who saved them out of the hand of those who despoiled them. Yet they didn't listen to their judges, for they played the prostitute after other gods and bowed themselves down to them. They turned aside quickly out of the way in which their fathers walked, obeying the commandments of Yahweh, but they didn't do so. When Yahweh raised them up judges, then Yahweh was with the judge and saved them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it grieved Yahweh because of their groaning by reason of those who oppressed them and troubled them. But it happened when the judge was dead that they turned back and dealt more corruptly than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down to them. They didn't cease from their doings nor from their stubborn way. The anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel, and he said, Because this nation have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not listened to my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations that Joshua left when he died, that by them I may prove Israel, whether they keep the way of Yahweh to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it or not. So Yahweh left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Judges chapter 3
Judges chapter 3 Now these are the nations which Yahweh left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least such as before knew nothing of it, namely, the five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites who lived on Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal Hermon to the entrance of Hamath. They were left to prove Israel by them, to know whether they would listen to the commandments of Yahweh which he commanded their fathers by Moses. The children of Israel lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their own daughters to their sons, and served their gods. The children of Israel did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, and forgot Yahweh their God, and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth. Therefore the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushan Rishathaim eight years. When the children of Israel cried to Yahweh, Yahweh raised up a savior to the children of Israel, who saved them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The spirit of Yahweh came on him, and he judged Israel. And he went out to war, and Yahweh delivered Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathaim. The land had rest forty years. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. And Yahweh strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. He gathered to him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and he went and struck Israel, and they possessed the city of palm trees. The children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried to Yahweh, Yahweh raised them up a savior, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite, a man left-handed. The children of Israel sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. Ehud made a sword, which had two edges, a cubit in length, and he wore it under his clothing on his right thigh. He offered the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. When he had made an end of offering the tribute, he sent away the people who bore the tribute. But he himself turned back from the quarries that were by Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand to you, king. The king said, Keep silence. All who stood by him went out from him. Ehud came to him, and he was sitting by himself alone in the cool upper room. Ehud said, I have a message from God to you. He arose out of his seat. Ehud put forth his left hand and took the sword from his right thigh and thrust it into his body. And the handle also went in after the blade, and the fat closed on the blade, for he didn't draw the sword out of his body, and it came out behind. Then Ehud went forth into the porch and shut the doors of the upper room on him and locked them. Now when he was gone out, his servants came, And they saw, and behold, the doors of the upper room were locked, and they said, Surely he is covering his feet in the upper room. They waited until they were ashamed, and behold, he didn't open the doors of the upper room. Therefore they took the key and opened them, and behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. Ehud escaped while they waited, and passed beyond the quarries, and escaped to Serah. It happened when he had come that he blew a trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he before them. He said to them, Follow me, for Yahweh has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. They followed him and took the fords of the Jordan against the Moabites and didn't allow any man to pass over. They struck of Moab at that time about 10,000 men, every lusty man and every man of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel. The land had rest 
80 years. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who struck of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad, and he also saved Israel. Judges chapter 4. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh when Ehud was dead. Yahweh sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth of the Gentiles. The children of Israel cried to Yahweh, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. She lived under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. She sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Hasn't Yahweh the God of Israel commanded, Go and draw to Mount Tabor, and take with you ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? I will draw to you to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. She said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the journey that you take shall not be for your honor, for Yahweh will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali together to Kadesh, and there went up ten thousand men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite, had separated himself from the Kenites, even from the children of Hobab, the brother-in-law of Moses, and had pitched his tent as far as the oak in Sa'ananim, which is by Kadesh. They told Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was gone up to Mount Tabor. Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people who were with him, from Herosheth of the Gentiles, to the river Kishon. Deborah said to Barak, Go, for this is the day in which Yahweh has delivered Sisera into your hand. Hasn't Yahweh gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and ten thousand men after him. Yahweh confused Sisera and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera alighted from his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the army to Herosheth of the Gentiles. And all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. There was not a man left. However, Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn in, my lord. Turn in to me. Don't be afraid. He came into her tent, and she covered him with a rug. He said to her, Please, give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. She opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. He said to her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man comes and inquires of you and says, Is there any man here that you shall say no? Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and struck the pin into his temples, and it pierced through into the ground, for he was in a deep sleep. So he swooned and died. Behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you seek. He came to her, and behold, Sisera lay dead, and the tent peg was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. The hand of the children of Israel prevailed more and more against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Judges chapter 5. Then Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, saying on that day, saying, Because the leaders took the lead in Israel, because the people offered themselves willingly, be blessed, Yahweh. 
Hear, you kings, give ear, you princes. I, even I, will sing to Yahweh. I will sing praise to Yahweh, the God of Israel. Yahweh, when you went forth out of Seir, when you marched out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled, the sky also dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water. The mountains quaked at the presence of Yahweh, even Sinai at the presence of Yahweh, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied. The travelers walked through byways. The rulers ceased in Israel. They ceased until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose, a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. Then war was in the gates. Was there a shield or a spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless Yahweh. Tell of it, you who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets, and you who walk by the way, far from the noise of archers, in the places of drawing water. There they will rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh, even the righteous acts of His rule in Israel. Then the people of Yahweh went down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead away your captives, you son of Abinoam. Then a remnant of the nobles and the people came down. Yahweh came down for me against the mighty. Those whose root is in Amalek came out of Ephraim, after you, Benjamin, among your peoples. Governors came down out of Machir. Those who handle the marshal's staff came out of Zebulun. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah, as was Issachar, so was Barak. They rushed into the valley at his feet. By the watercourses of Reuben there were great resolves of heart. Why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the whistling for the flocks? At the watercourses of Reuben there were great searchings of heart. Gilead lived beyond the Jordan. Why did Dan remain in ships? Asher sat still at the haven of the sea and lived by his creeks. Zebulun was a people that jeopardized their lives to the deaths. Naphtali also on the high places of the field. The kings came and fought. Then the kings of Canaan fought at Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no plunder of silver. From the sky stars fought. From their courses they fought against Sisera. The river Kishon swept them away. That ancient river, the river Kishon. My soul marched on with strength. Then the horse hooves stamped because of the prancings, the prancings of their strong ones. Curse Meraz, said the angel of Yahweh. Curse bitterly its inhabitants, because they didn't come to help Yahweh, to help Yahweh against the mighty. Jael shall be blessed above women, the wife of Heber, the Kenite. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked for water. She gave him milk. She brought him butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the tent peg and her right hand to the workman's hammer. With the hammer she struck Sisera. She struck through his head. Yes, she pierced and struck through his temples. At her feet he bowed. He fell. He lay. At her feet he bowed. He fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. Through the window she looked out and cried, Sisera's mother looked through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why do the wheels of his chariots wait? Her wise ladies answered her. Yes, she returned, answer to herself. Have they not found? Have they not divided the spoil? A lady, two ladies to every man. To Sisera, a spoil of dyed garments, a spoil of dyed garments embroidered. Dyed garments embroidered on both sides, on the necks of the spoil? So let all your enemies perish, Yahweh, but let those who love him be as the sun when it rises forth in its strength. Then the land had rest forty years. Judges chapter 6 The children of Israel did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. 
and Yahweh delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. The hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of Midian the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. So it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth until you come to Gaza, and left no sustenance in Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they came up with their livestock and their tents. They came in as locusts for multitude. Both they and their camels were without number, and they came into the land to destroy it. Israel was brought very low because of Midian, and the children of Israel cried to Yahweh. It happened when the children of Israel cried to Yahweh because of Midian that Yahweh sent a prophet to the children of Israel, and he said to them, Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am Yahweh, your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But you have not listened to my voice. The angel of Yahweh came and sat under the oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained to Joash, the Abbey's right. And his son, Gideon, was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of Yahweh appeared to him and said, Yahweh is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O my Lord, if Yahweh is with us, then why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wondrous works, which our father told us of, saying, Didn't Yahweh bring us up from Egypt? But now Yahweh has cast us off and delivered us into the hand of Midian. Yahweh looked at him and said, Go in this your might and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Haven't I sent you? He said to him, O oh Lord, how shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Yahweh said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. He said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. Please don't go away until I come to you and bring out my present and lay it before you. He said, I will wait until you come back. Gideon went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened cakes of an ephah of meal. He put the meal in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out to him under the oak and presented it. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. He did so. Then the angel of Yahweh stretched out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened cakes, and fire went up out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes, and the angel of Yahweh departed out of his sight. Gideon saw that he was the angel of Yahweh, and Gideon said, Alas, Lord Yahweh, because I have seen the angel of Yahweh face to face. Yahweh said to him, Peace be to you. Don't be afraid. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to Yahweh and called it, Yahweh is peace. To this day, it is still in Ophrah of the Abbey's rites. It happened the same night that Yahweh said to him, Take your father's bull, even the second bull seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asherah that is by it, and build an altar to Yahweh your God on the top of this stronghold in an orderly way, and take the second bull and offer a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah which you shall cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as Yahweh had spoken to him, 
And it happened because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, so that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. When the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the Asherah was cut down that was by it, and the second bull was offered on the altar that was built. They said one to another, Who has done this thing? When they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the city said to Joash, Bring out your son, that he may die, because he has broken down the altar of Baal, and because he has cut down the Asherah that was beside it. Joash said to all who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you save him? He who will contend for him, let him be put to death while it is yet morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because someone has broken down his altar. Therefore, on that day, he named him Jerub Baal, saying, Let Baal contend against him, because he has broken down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east assembled themselves together And they passed over and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of Yahweh came on Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered together after him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, and they also were gathered together after him. And he sent messengers to Asher, and to Zebulun, and to Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have spoken, behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there be dew on the fleece only, and it be dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand as you have spoken. It was so, for he rose up early on the next day and pressed the fleece together and wrung the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Gideon said to God, Don't let your anger be kindled against me, and I will speak but this once. Please, let me make a trial just this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece, and on all the ground let there be dew. God did so that night, for it was dry on the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Judges chapter 7 Then Jerubbabal, who is Gideon, and all the people who were with him, rose up early and encamped beside the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. Yahweh said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore, Proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return and depart from Mount Gilead. Twenty-two thousand of the people returned, and ten thousand remained. Yahweh said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. It shall be that of whom I tell you this shall go with you, the same shall go with you, and of Whoever I tell you, this shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people to the water. And Yahweh said to Gideon, Everyone who laps of the water with his tongue like a dog laps, you shall set him by himself. Likewise, everyone who bows down on his knees to drink. The number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down on their knees to drink water. Yahweh said to Gideon, By the three hundred men who lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, each to his own place. So the people took food in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the men of Israel, every man to his tent, but retained the three hundred men, and the camp of Midian was beneath him in the valley. It happened the same night, that Yahweh said to him, Arise, go down into the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down, go with Pura, your servant, down to the camp, and you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hands will be strengthened to go down into the camp. 
Then went he down with Pura, his servant, to the outermost part of the armed men who were in the camp. The Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like locusts for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand which is on the seashore for multitude. When Gideon had come, behold, there was a man telling a dream to his fellow, and he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and behold, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian, and came to the tent, and struck it so that it fell, and it turned upside down so that the tent lay flat. His fellow answered, This is nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has delivered Midian into his hand with all the army. It was so. When Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshipped, and he returned into the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for Yahweh has delivered the army of Midian into your hand. He divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put into the hands of all of them trumpets and empty pitchers with torches within the pitchers. He said to them, Watch me and do likewise. Behold, when I come to the outermost part of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so you shall do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and shout for Yahweh and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outermost part of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, when they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and broke in pieces the pitchers that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and held the torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands with which to blow, and they shouted, The sword of Yahweh and of Gideon! They stood every man in his place around the camp, and all the army ran, and they shouted and put them to flight. They blew the three hundred trumpets, and Yahweh set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army, and the army fled as far as Beth Shittah toward Zerera, as far as the border of Abel Mahola by Tabath. The men of Israel were gathered together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and out of all Manasseh and pursued after Midian. Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against Midian and take before them the waters as far as Beth Barah, even the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were gathered together and took the waters as far as Beth Barah, even the Jordan. They took the two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeeb, and they killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeeb they killed at the winepress of Zeeb, and pursued Midian, and they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeeb to Gideon beyond the Jordan.